And it's not so much during rhinoplasty, how can you prevent it? It's before the rhinoplasty, how are you going to prevent that? So what's essential is to find out if the, in your history and your examination, does that patient have any bleeding tendencies? Are they on any medication? Especially how many people are just taking aspirins, et cetera, and, and whatever other blood thinners. So I think it's really important to firstly make sure who the patient is you're dealing with. In the actual operation, a couple of really important things is firstly your infiltration. You've got to make sure that you infiltrate adequately, okay? Packing the nose before the operation as well. So I'm packing not just with iodine, but also with adrenaline soaked gauze. So that has to be not just packed, but packed for long enough. And then when you actually are opening up the nose in whichever way you're going to operate, to keep to those surgical planes is essential. If you notice that there's bleeding in the septum, nine times out of 10, you're not deep enough. The plane's not deep enough. And you need to very patiently take your time to get into that plane where when you just open the septum, it's that beautiful white color. And you're like, it's the nirvana of rhinoplasty, as Roderick always says. So that's really essential. If it, if it does start to bleed, then make sure that the blood pressure is not too high. So speak to your anesthetist. Make sure that you can pack with pledgets to try and stop the bleeding. And it's actually, for me, such an interesting question because just last week, after more than 10 years of operating, I had the one single patient who bled the most than I've ever had. And it was a recording of the live surgery for the Congress here. So yeah, it's, uh, sometimes you're the nail, sometimes you're hammer. I was definitely the nail in that last patient I operated on. And even though I went through all the pre-op checks and the intra-op checks, ultimately what I think it came down to is He'd been a sportsman who'd had a lot of trauma to his nose and those, that, that septum had been buckled and broken so many times and there was so much blood flow there and it was so thick and adherent to try and get really good planes was super difficult. But uh, we managed to survive. So we combine multiple techniques and actions to guarantee a minimal blood loss in our patients while they undergo no surgery. First of all, we try to lower the blood pressure as much as possible. Secondly, we apply cold gauzes on the face of the nose, guaranteeing vasoconstriction, which is small blood vessels in the face. And thirdly, we inject also multiple small depots of molecules that guarantee blood vessels to become as small as possible. And by the combination of these multiple actions, we try to prevent hematoma formation. And nowadays in my patients, only one third of the patients has swelling in the face due to hematoma. Of course, there are some actions that we cannot control or some hematoma formations that we cannot control if there is a, a clotting disorder or there is a high blood pressure in the patient. But we, from a surgeon perspective, we combine multiple actions to prevent blood loss as much as possible in our patients.